Hi, welcome to Copenhagen. It's been a long time since I did a live, so I thought I would come on today and uh, let you see what I'm working on. And it's uh, square drills, so using the, the good old golden tweezers. And this one is called Praying Monk. And it's one that I've been wanting to work on for quite a while. And uh, finally got around to it. I've now got a few diamond paintings that are in the really want to do category. And this has been one for quite a long time. Um, I think I got it in February this year. It's now October and I finally got around to working on it. So the first time um, that I've uh, had a diamond painting from this company, um, try to remember the name of the company, I need to look it up. It's Create Love Share from uh, Australia uh, that ordered this one quite a, an unusual one, a bit different from uh, most diamond paintings. It's got a sort of stained glass effect, but I just really like the picture, I like the colours, and just the subject. So, not even halfway yet, I can let you see. Hi Michelle, it has, it's been a long time. Uh, I was just saying that at the beginning, I haven't been on for quite a while. Um been struggling to find the time. So uh finally decided to take a week off work and concentrate on I'll get the hat out of the way. Uh this is what I've done so far. If I move all the trays. So this is praying monk. So you can see, not even halfway. So yeah, I decided, um, I got a, a message uh, from work saying that I had two weeks and one day to take before the end of the year. And if I don't take them, um, I will lose them. So I decided to take this week. And this morning I thought, great. I've got a stack of stuff to do, unboxings and unbaggings and comparisons, the whole thing. Just the stuff that I've got sitting here, I've got 18 videos to do and I've got ideas for other videos, so I've got more than 18 videos to do. Um, this morning I got up and they started to rip up the street outside. So they've been uh, basically taking the surface layer off, they're going to resurface it, and they chose the week that I decided I was going to do YouTube videos. So I don't know how it's going to go, haven't got any done today because uh, the background noise uh, irritates me and I don't want it irritating people who are watching the videos. So hopefully tomorrow is going to be a quieter day once they've taken the the surface off the road, but you just have to wait and see. Just trying to remember how to work all this again. Hi Carly. <clears throat> oh, sorry to hear that, Michelle. Well, that was that was not that long ago, August. Yeah, sorry to hear that. Um yeah, so so for me it's just uh just not had time. Um, so, as I said, I thought I would try and get a few videos done this week. Took one week off to try and concentrate on it. And they've decided to rip up the street. So, didn't have any warning. They never told us they were going to be doing it. So, I'll just have to see how it goes. So 
How are you, Carly? I haven't spoke to anybody for a while. And the videos have uh, sort of stopped for quite a while as well. Some people might have noticed I've been doing shots. It was just really to try and get something out there. Um, but I've got quite a few interesting videos to do. So I'm hoping tomorrow I'm going to be able to do, I don't know, hopefully record about four videos if they don't make too much noise outside. And we'll see how that goes. Maybe doing okay. Oh, you just got back. Okay, cool. So how was uh, USA? How was Angie? How long were you there? Three weeks and you got sick. Ah, oh. oh, no. About as much luck as me. <laughs> America, can be, America can be described as please add two more cups of sugar and a donut. Is that the first time you've been to the States? First time, yeah. Well, as you know, uh, the only place I've been in America was Vegas. I don't think that's typical America though. There again, I don't know if there is a typical America. It depends where you go. Plain white bread has added sugars in it. Really? Yeah, we hardly ever eat plain white bread. Um, but I've got used to eating the, the Danish brown bread. It's much more healthy. But when I lived in Scotland, white bread was, that was it. I mean, we didn't eat anything else but white bread. Since I moved to Denmark, I've sort of changed definitely that way. I eat rolls and things that are covered in seeds, which is something that I never did in Scotland. Sugar and bread, yeah. Different. So, did you go to any uh, any good diamond painting stores, like Hobby Lobby, that we don't have over here? Hi, Caroline. Thanksgiving Day in Canada. Happy Thanksgiving Day. I didn't know that. That's news to me. Well, this is uh, let's dig up the street outside Jim's apartment, or Jim and Tammy's apartment, I should say, uh, when he has booked a whole week off to record YouTube videos. So Tammy's working from home today. So we've spent quite a bit of today looking out the window and watching the chaos outside. Denmark isn't very organised when it comes to road uh, construction and um, yeah, the, the police were involved at one point, I had a long talk with the guys. Uh, traffic getting totally confused where they were meant to be going, people just stopping because they had no idea where they were meant to be going. 
So it's, it's been an interesting day, not what I thought I was going to be doing today. I was hoping to get at least four videos done today. I've got a little mountain of stuff that I really want to get done. Uh, unboxings, unbaggings, comparisons, accessories, the whole shebang. Ah, uh, okay, that makes sense. So, what is your traditional Thanksgiving dinner? Is it is it different from the, the States, or is it pretty much the same? And is it a big thing? Is it, like, as big as Christmas? Tammy told me that Thanksgiving is a really big thing. Um, we don't have Thanksgiving in Scotland, and they don't have it in Denmark. So the whole Thanksgiving thing is uh, something totally alien to me. I've noticed, it's pretty normal, but um, I've noticed that quite a lot of these black drills have tabs on them. And I'm very fussy with the drills. I always make sure that there are no little imperfections in the sides. Helps to keep things nice and neat. But I'm not worried if I run out. I don't think I will. Companies tend to give a lot of spare 310s. But uh, even if it did, I have enough spare black drills to do this whole diamond painting uh, multiple times. We have thousands, thousands of 310s. So it won't be an issue. I can afford to be extremely fussy. But I still think I probably will have enough. Black, for some reason, seems to be the colour that, uh, if you're going to have problems, it's going to be 310. To be honest, I didn't even know that Canada had a Thanksgiving Day. I thought Thanksgiving was just an American thing. We have uh, Tivoli this weekend. We're going to Tivoli. We do this every year. Um, Tivoli is the. I'm going. To, I'm going to change this because I've been saying it's the second oldest amusement park in the world. I actually found out it's the third oldest. There is an amusement park in Austria that is older than Tivoli, but Denmark still has the oldest amusement park in the world, which is called Backen. So we're going to Tivoli on Saturday because they open up for their Halloween uh, display, and. On the first day, they have massive pumpkins. They have a yearly competition to see who can grow the heaviest pumpkin. Um, I think they have it's about five or six. I can't remember now. So they go and or we go and uh, they weigh the pumpkins, and we get to see them being weighed, and then they place them in order of size and wait. So we've been doing that for a few years and uh, we enjoy it. We have, I uh, forget now, I think it's around 10,000 pumpkins in Tivoli uh, during the, the display. Um, thinking about it, I may actually do a short YouTube live and let people see it. Uh, it's really, really cool if you're into Halloween. They build a little spooky village and uh, they've got a lot of, uh, just a lot of things Halloween related. And uh, once that's finished, I think it runs for a few weeks. Once that's finished, they close Tivoli again. They strip everything down and then they set up for their Christmas display, which is uh, really cool as well. It has over 1 million Christmas lights. So, uh, yeah, they, we like the events. They do an Easter one as well, which is 
it's just a lot of flowers. Hi Helen, how are you? How's Scotland? Is it raining? Um, yeah, I think out of the three, the Easter one's the least favourite. Well, they have uh, a lot of flowers and uh, live sheep. They set up a, a little pen where you see some uh, some live sheep. I'm not sure why, but they just do. So I'm just working on the three tens. You can probably hear them throwing quite a few in the tray. So this is my junk pile so far. Um, pr probably most of them are three tens. And if I switch cameras, you can see how much I've done in creating that pile. I have to move back. So move the trays. So this is what I've done. If I switch the light off, um, as always, don't look at your diamond painting when you've got a light pad underneath. Don't look at it too closely. Uh, you're going to see every tiny little gap. If I change this to white light, it'll probably give a better idea of the colour. I think this is going to be a really, really nice diamond painting. It's got a sort of uh, stained glass effect. So not halfway. This is the praying monk. But um, I'll switch back. I prefer when I'm working to have it on a sort of yellow light, or no, not orange, amber. Um, but easier on the eyes. If I get the phone, I can show you uh, what it's going to look like. And I just need to figure the camera, which I always get wrong. So oh, I'm on the wrong one. No, it doesn't matter. I can do this. With, if it'll focus. And it won't. I'll try it in the other camera. I forgot what one I was on, that's better. So, it was better. That's what I'm working on. You can see there's quite a bit above the monk. So I am basically just nearly at his shoulder there. So I've still got all of this to go, so not even halfway. But really nice. I like really like the colours that just the sorry the blend of the colours, um the purples and the greens. It's a really nice picture. You have to give me a second because I have to switch screens while I'm doing all that and I can't see comments. Uh yesterday it was raining, not today. We got sun for a change. Nice. We have somewhat similar traditions. Turkey is the usual meal, but I married a Brit who had lamb. Yeah, so that'll be an English Brit. Um, yeah, lamb in Scotland. Lamb isn't that common. Um, obviously, we don't celebrate Thanksgiving, but Christmas, um, Turkey, definitely Turkey. And then I moved to Denmark, and they don't eat turkey at Christmas, which I found bizarre. Just, you've got to eat turkey at Christmas. So, yeah, no turkey. In, in Scotland, at least, um, the supermarkets are absolutely full of frozen turkeys. Denmark, nothing. Um, they go more for um, ham and goose, I think, is quite common. Never tried that yet. And duck. Duck is common. So uh, we normally have duck. Which I really like. I'm not that sure that. Apart from a Chinese takeaway, uh, I don't think I'd really had duck as a meal. I really like it.
So how how did you manage to marry a Brit? How did you meet? I think the people that, that come in quite often uh, know the story about how Tammy and I met. I was living in Scotland, she was living in Copenhagen, but she is American. Um, and we both played an online game called World of Warcraft. And that's how we got to know each other, through playing that for years. Eventually, I moved over here. And I've been here 10 years now. And we have been married for four years in November. We got married in Copenhagen City Hall. I'm still thinking about that sugar in the bread, Carly. Like you said, why? Why put sugar in bread? Or added sugar? I mean, I think if they've not got to put sugar in it to get the yeast to ferment or whatever it does, is that not sugar that the yeast feeds on? So is hi Nancy, thanks for dropping in. Good afternoon. Um I forgot what I was gonna say. Yeah, um I take it uh Canadian Thanksgiving Day is a, a public holiday. That's just what we were talking about, Nancy. I don't really know much about Thanksgiving. Yeah, since they don't celebrate it in Scotland or Denmark. I just know that people eat a lot of food. And it's uh, thanks for the harvest, I think. So I'm, I'm waiting to find out how Michelle met her British husband. I've been to Canada. Um, again, I, I don't know who knows who, who listens in, when, and that sort of thing. But I went to Canada for a month, and that's how I ended up in Vegas, obviously. So how are you doing, Helen, if you're still there? I haven't spoke to anybody for months, it feels like.
I think it's it's always difficult at, at times when when people pass because you just don't know what to say. Um, I mean, it's just a, a really hard time in life when things like that happen. And some people want to talk about it, some people don't want to talk about it. It's just, uh, yeah. Ah, okay, Helen. Well, I'm glad you're better. That's good. You'll be able to eat haggis again. Internet issues. Yeah, I had enough of them. Remember, for quite a while, I had a lot of problems trying to do lives, just kept getting cut off. Eventually, they fixed it. I'm still, I'm sure it was something to do with YouTube's settings. Quite a few discussions with the uh, customer service. Finally, they fixed it. So, has everybody's electricity costs gone up? So, no, Cali's in. Uh, no, I'm saying I know Cali, as far as I remember, Cali is in Belgium. Hope I got that right. But I've got people in the States are in. Are you having the same thing as in Europe that the electricity prices are going sky high? We had a, a meeting at the hotel. I mean, it wasn't about that, but it got mentioned that the hotel's electricity bill. I think it's a quarter, uh, like every like um, every three months. Their electricity bill normally was, I think it was uh, 1.3 million kroner, and the last one that came in was 5.8 million. Oh, I emigrated. C scale. I don't even know where that is. That's somewhere new to me. C scale. Never heard of it. Ah, so so he was he was already living in Canada. Okay. I thought maybe the internet was going to be involved somewhere with, with that story. Moment school, wow, thirty three years. Congratulations. I'm sure that one, if not both of you, deserve medals. 
electric and gas as well. So, yeah, food. Yeah, that's another thing the hotel was talking about. Um, the cost of uh, like food, like the obviously they they buy a lot of stuff. Um, so the costs in the hotels are just going sky high now, and they can only they can only palm so much of that off onto the customer because things would just become so expensive they wouldn't be able to run. So it's obviously affecting the hotel's profit margins. But, um, yeah, they were saying that uh, I think the price of uh, mince, like mince or mince beef, mince meat, uh, the price of that has gone up by 300%. Different things have went up by different amounts, but I remembered that they said uh, minced meat, which I'd imagine they use for, to, like, to make burgers and stuff, um, or fricadella, um, it's gone up 300%. But, I mean, I think everything has gone up, but 300%, that's a massive jump. Tammy is here, but not in this room. Uh, she's she's working. She works from home uh, on a Monday, so she's uh, plowing through a lot of emails. So she's uh, she's really busy. But I got a an email telling me that I had eleven days vacation to take before the end of the year, and if I don't take them. Uh, I lose them. They won't like give me the money. Um, I would just lose eleven days vacation. So I decided to take this week off and concentrate on getting some YouTube stuff done because I've just been really struggling to find time. And I thought, okay, I'll take a week and I'll concentrate. Well, not all week. Uh, Tammy's taking Thursday and Friday, so we'll spend some time doing stuff. But I thought I would have three days to uh, get some of this stuff done. I've, I've got a lot of stuff. And I've actually got some other stuff on the way. And it's stuff that I've never seen before. So hopefully uh, it will make some interesting videos. Just finding the time to get it done has been a problem. I work as office manager for a German club and in October we celebrate Oktoberfest. Oktoberfest. That involves beer, I would imagine. Well, we've been, uh, recently, we've been going to a lot of music concerts because we like to go and see live music and uh, during Corona, for a long time, that basically stopped. So we went sort of crazy this month. We went to see uh, a Danish blues band at Royal Arena uh, two weeks ago. Then on Friday, we went back to Royal Arena and we saw Deep Purple, which I never ever thought I would see Deep Purple. <laughs> um, I used to listen to them when I was like 17, 18, and never imagined that uh, I would be going to see Ian Gillen uh, when he was 77. So he, he's doing, or they're doing, a world tour. He's 77 years old and he's traveling the world doing gigs, crazy stuff. Um, and on Friday this week, we are going to see Sting. 
Um, I'm working on one called Praying Monk. Um, where to put my phone? Oh, find it. I'll show you the picture, Helen. <clears throat> Which camera? This one. Uh, I'll get. I'll eventually get used to this. I always go the wrong way. But that's uh, that's the picture. Try and get the whole thing in. So this is from uh, a company in Australia. I like to buy diamond paintings from different companies um, to compare them and all that sort of stuff. And that's basically why I started doing the YouTube. Um, so people could see what to expect from different companies, the, the quality, the packaging, the whole thing. So I have now tried diamond paintings from 43 different companies. I was quite surprised when I went through uh, Gem's phone and started looking at the companies and making notes and found out 43 different companies I've tried. Good morning, afternoon, evening, Palm Beat. Thanks for dropping in. Uh, for me, it's just checking the time. It's 4.07 p.m. in Denmark. So good afternoon to you. So I've got some accessories coming that I've never seen reviewed before. Doesn't mean they haven't been, it just means I haven't seen the reviews, I guess, but <coughs> some quite interesting stuff. Quite looking forward to them. And I don't know if anybody saw the the unbagging I did of the ostrich diamond painting. It was a really narrow, like long one um, of, I think it's four ostriches. If, if you've been diamond painting for any length of time, you will have seen it. It's I see it quite often, but um, I got that and uh, I think I, I had missing drills. I had burst bags. It was basically... A disaster. Um, so I contacted the company and they said they would send a replacement, which they did. Um, and it's been sitting here for quite a while. So I'm going to do the unbagging of the replacement to see if uh, things are any better this time. So that's just one of the videos. Most of the other things are things that I've never uh, done before. That, that's just sort of a repeat performance. So I'll be skipping most of it. The main thing is, um, did it manage to ship okay this time? And I've got another one. Um, I can't even remember what kit it was. Yeah, you're you're an hour behind us, Helen. Yeah, it's a really nice diamond paint. I really like it. It's uh, quite a bit different from uh, most. Just I really like the the colours. I think it it's going to look really really nice. Yeah, I was going to say that there was another one I did an unbagging and I had the right number of colours, but one of the colours was their own DMC code. Um, so I contacted them and it was only one bag and it was one of those little 200 bags. Um, it was only one bag that was wrong. It wasn't short. Normally those sort of things, it's either you get extra or you don't get enough. 
that was I just got the totally wrong colour. I'm saying totally wrong. I think it was one digit different, or they transposed it and just put the wrong bag in. So I've got the replacement still in the sealed envelope, and I've got the original bag. So it's going to be interesting to see how much of a difference there is in the colours. I mean, probably I could have used spare drills. I probably got that colour. But it was a test of uh, customer service. When I do the all these reviews and things, um, none of them are scripted or like the companies never try and tell me what to say or anything like that. It's just a, okay, if you want me to do a review, I'll do a review, but if things are wrong or things are bad, I'm going to, I'm going to mention it. I'm, I'm not going to... Uh, I'm not going to try and gloss over things um, because I do get some companies that send me stuff for free. Um, I think that's just how things work. Um, as you get more subscribers, you become more attractive to companies because obviously if you've got a lot of subscribers and a lot of people watch your videos and you review for a company, it gives them access to potential customers um, so it's quite nice to get them for free because um, I'm kind of scared to add up how much I've spent in diamond paintings um, over the past three years. But sometimes I get stuff for free, uh, but I still buy things. I mean, this one I bought, um, I've, I've got a few to on bag as well or on box, and I bought them. So it's not as if I only do... Uh, stuff that I managed to get for free. But I think the benefit for people watching the videos is they get a better idea of what to expect from a particular company, uh, what kind of packaging they do for the drills, and do they, do they do those little 200 strings that take forever to count and then cut? Do they do resealable bags? Uh, do they have decent tweezers that most people don't use? Um, so yeah, I mean, that that's why I do it. I mean, I, I'm curious about the stuff myself, and it's just a chance to let people see what to expect from different companies. So then I start looking at other things like accessories and different things, not just diamond paintings. So I spotted some unusual different stuff. Hope you have a relaxing week off. Uh, sea skill is on the west coast of Bryan. Oh, the Lake District. Oh, okay. Uh, it's the most nuclear contaminated. Why did they move? It's on the coast near the Isle of Man. Okay, yeah, I've never been. I've been to the Lake District a few times, but uh, never been there. Maybe they don't have many tourists because it is the most nuclear contaminated area in Britain. Thanks, Helen. I hope you have a relaxing week off. I'm going to try. Hopefully I manage to get some videos done so these guys can be quiet. Lots and lots of beer and food. Mm, not really. I'm, I'm not allowed lots and lots of beer and food. I have to be a bit more careful in what I'm eating and what I'm drinking. Actually, uh, in this past period when I've sort of been AWOL, um, I was back at the hospital again. I had uh, another minor stroke, so and I was at work again. So uh, yeah, I need to watch what I'm doing. Thinking of working on DAC Princess Mononoke. Mononoke, Mononoke. I don't know how to pronounce that. 
Uh, I, I don't know if I know that one, Helen. Um, I've got, I think, about six Diamond Art Clubs that I still have to do. And I've got one, in fact, I'll check when I got it. One that I've had for a long time. I'm just going to check. I have got one from Diamond Art Club that I ordered on the 9th of March 2020. Uh, and I received it on the 20th of March 2020. And it's been sitting in box two since then. So I'm thinking about starting to look at these old ones, older ones that have been sitting for a long time and, and do them. But I've got some other Diamond Art Club ones that I like better than that. Not that I don't like it, but some of the newer stuff is really good. And talking about being really good, I've been really good. I've seen at least two very recently that I really liked, and I did not click the Buy Now button. Oh, you might see, oh, Tammy's going to be so jealous. Um, we, we've been talking about this, like, who we want to see before they stop. And uh, music-wise, um, for me anyway, um, pretty much everything and anything except rap. I don't like rap music. Um, but music of preference would be blues and rock or rock blues sort of combined. Um, as I said, we went to see Deep Purple, but we're going to see Sting. So not exactly rock or Maybe a bit blues-ish, but, uh, so, and then <laughs> we're, we've got tickets uh, for next year to go and see uh, Ramstein, who are definitely heavy rock. So we're going to see them in Olenza, mm -hmm. which we visited in the summer there. Uh, Olenza is where Hans Christian Andersen was born. Famous Dennis Ryer. Um, I did not think while we were wandering through Hans Christian Andersen's childhood home that we were going to be going to see the German uh, heavy rock band Ramstein only a few hundred metres away from uh, Hans Christian Andersen's house. But uh, that's going to be really cool. That's going to be spectacular uh, stage show. Really looking forward to it. Uh, Tammy, when we come back from Ramstein next year, Tammy and her oldest daughter are going to see the Scorpions uh, in Royal Arena in Copenhagen. We actually saw the Scorpions a few years ago. Uh, we had tickets booked for Royal Arena in Copenhagen, and my nephew decided he was going to get married on the same date. So we ended up... Uh, selling those tickets and going to Scotland instead to a wedding. We came back from that and we went to uh, Gothenburg to see the Scorpions. It's probably the most expensive gig we've went to uh, when we take into account the, the, the cost of the train and the hotel. We actually stayed in the hotel that when we opened the curtains, we were looking at the stadium that uh, the Scorpions played in. Couldn't get any closer. It's literally a three-minute walk. Um, that was cool, but I've seen them, so um, I'm not going to go and see them again in Copenhagen. But Tammy's daughter wanted to go and see them, so Tammy's going with her. Ah, oh, right, okay, Helen, I know that one. Yeah, I just didn't know the name of it. Yeah, Diamond Art Club have been coming out with a lot of really good uh, renderings. Some really, really good stuff. But I finally decided, I put my foot down, and Joker came out. I've got Batman, and Joker came out, and I always said, if if they do Joker, I'll get that. Um, and they brought it out, and I looked at it, and I thought, uh, I kept thinking about all, I mean, I think I've now got about 80 diamond paintings sitting here. And I finally really got to the point and thought, okay, that's it, enough. I mean, 
Oh, that's a lot of diamond paintings. I mean, a lot of them are quite small, like 30 by 30, 30 by 40. But I do have quite a few that are big. And I've still got one that's uh, it's a blank canvas. It's just basically squares, like white canvas with the grid on it. And uh, no markings. And I got that because I thought it was it would be a challenge which it definitely will be. Um, so I'm trying to clear my feet and get stuff out of the way and maybe get onto that one. It'll take a long time. Once I get down to a sensible number, then I'll maybe start looking to see. But that's going to be probably years, to be honest. So I've, I've managed to uh, kick the habit for now. Okay, what am I doing next? N. N is 22, 22. These are resin drills, so they're nice and shiny. But they do have gaps, as you can see. Um, where are we looking? Here. You can see the gaps, but I don't even think about it anymore because I know they really, really don't matter. Um, I know that a lot of people get hung up on that, all these irregular gaps. But once this is up in the wall, um, it's going to look perfect. As long as the squares are in the square, don't think about the gaps. Switch off your light pad, take a couple of steps back, and it's going to look fine. I mean, that camera is, what, about maybe just over a foot away from the canvas. If I turn the, that's the light pad off, you can see those gaps, I suppose. But, again, diamond paintings aren't designed to be looked at with your nose virtually touching the canvas. They're meant to be looked at from a distance. So all those little gaps, I don't think about it. If I switch to the other camera, if, if I, I'll switch the light pad off again, and I'll switch to the other camera, which is a bit higher. Um, that's maybe, what, a foot and a half? Yeah, about a foot and a half, um, which is still far too close. I mean, you wouldn't stand a foot and a half away from a diamond painting, at least not one this size. Um, so if I switch the camera, if I can remember how, remove that. And I put the white light on so you can see it a bit better. If I can reach the button, you can't see any gaps. And that's only a foot and a half-ish away. Um, we're only looking at half of the actual diamond painting so you're not going to be that close looking at this you need to get further back to see the whole thing um and you will not see a single gap at all october first lots of beer and food yeah that sounds about right I have been told that I should limit my beer intake to uh, a maximum of two beers a day, uh, up to a maximum of 10 beers in a week. So it isn't even two beers a day, uh, seven days a week. And they told me if I go to like a party or something, I can have three. So um, not much of a party on three beers. But it's just, it's because of uh, the stroke that I had. And I'm taking uh, cholesterol pills and blood thinning pills. And I've cut myself at work a couple of times since then. Um, I got a nice one on my wrist. Don't know if it'll show. Going the wrong way. That one there, that took, uh, 
I took quite a few hours to stop bleeding. So, yeah. Working with sharp things and being on blood thinners, it's uh, just asking for trouble. I've no idea what I'm going to work on next. Well, I do actually. I know what I'm eventually going to be working on because uh, Tammy and I are going to be working on the same diamond painting. But um, she has to finish one that she's working on just now. Blunts and Gems, that's her name. Good afternoon from Copenhagen. But good morning to you. It's um, 4.27pm in Copenhagen, and that's Tammy sneezing. Probably because of the dust of the guys uh, scraping up the road outside, which is why I'm not recording any uh, unboxing videos or anything like that. Um, every now and again we hear beep, beep, beep as the trucks are backing up, and... Uh, just a lot of noise in general, so I, I don't really want videos where there's a lot of background noise. So the lives, it doesn't matter because I'm really just on to chat to people that drop in. But um, it can be irritating if you get a lot of background noise in a video. So hopefully tomorrow's going to be a quieter day. So, Blunts and Gems, I take it you are in the States. I think uh, most people who diamond paint live in America. That's the impression that I'm getting. Oklahoma. Cool. We should do a musical about that. 9.28 a.m. What's the weather like, Blunts? What's the weather like in Oklahoma in October? I don't know where Oklahoma is. Like, if you gave me a map of America and said, where's Oklahoma? No idea. I'll, I'll guess middle, is it? I don't know. Starting to get chilly in the mornings, warm in the afternoon, chilly at night. It's actually been really, really mild in Copenhagen. Um... On Friday, after the Deep Purple gig, we walked back and uh, it was so mild, it wasn't windy, wasn't chilly. Oh, right, oh, right, okay. I know where Texas is. That's where uh, Tammy, uh, Tammy's brothers live in Texas. Yeah, it's, I don't know what temperature it's getting down to at night here, but it's it still feels mild. And we were out last night, we were at Mojo Blues Bar, um, uh, a guy that I know, a guy called Ray Weaver, he was playing there, um, I used to work beside him, I hadn't seen him for a while, and found out he was uh, he was playing Mojo, so we went to Mojo last night, and we were there till midnight, um, well we actually left just before midnight, he started at 10, 10 o'clock at night, on a Sunday, um, expected to finish about one, but Tammy had work this morning, so we left early. But again, we walked, and uh, it was a really mild night. Quite surprised. Okay, hang on a second, Helen. 
Tommy. Yeah. Helen says bless you and <laughs> and hi. Okay. Sorry I made so much noise. I think I'm catching a cold. I'll probably have to be home for the next I told you every time I come month. on people say How's Tammy? <laughs> Where's Tammy? Hi everybody. Tam Tammy's working and I'm on vacation. I'm Yay. busy working. <laughs> <clears throat> Hope everybody's doing well. I got to get back to it. I have 46 tasks to get done still. Okay. Have fun. She's gone again. I've I've heard of Oklahoma, but um, I've never watched it. I don't really know what it's about. But it's a musical, isn't it? Oklahoma. I've seen the Wizard of Oz, though. <laughs> Elton John has been my favourite for a long time, but we've been listening to symphonic metal. Yeah, it's not much different from Elton John. Finland, Nightwish, Sonata. Nightwish, I think, I've heard of. Maybe. Yeah, Colleen, it's it's taken a while to sort of get to that point. Um, but it's uh, like, I mean, we also talk about it. But we're never going to get them all done before we die type thing. But um, you sort of start thinking, like, realistically how long is it going to take me to get these done and there's always going to be something new and better coming out just always um so yeah i've i've just really finally um decided that's it i got the last one that i bought was magic boss from diamond dark club when i saw that i, I couldn't not get it it's the most colorful diamond painting i've ever seen um, but now that's it. It's that is it. Until the next time. Oh, you're already putting your heating on. Yeah, we we haven't got to that stage yet. It's still pretty mild here. But there, I mean, we were talking about this earlier. The like the cost of living now, like electricity and food. Um, start, starting from the 1st of January, our electricity rate between, I think it's 5pm and 9pm, uh, the rate, I can't remember, it triples or something. So we've already been thinking, okay, what are we going to do <clears throat> to try and keep the cost down? So we ordered some, uh, some rechargeable lamps that are portable. <clears throat> I mean, it's not like um, camping lamps or anything like that. It's they're quite nice. They look like sort of egg shape, and they've got like a a, a handle on the top, and <clears throat> you can change them to different colours. You can set them to like candle imitation candle, um, and they charge in USB, <clears throat> and they run for up to some like ten hours. So we got three of them. And we're thinking, okay, we'll charge them up during the day when the electricity is at normal price. And then we'll use them um, between five and nine when the electricity is expensive. Because it won't be long until it's going to be dark most of the day um, in, in Denmark. <clears throat> Starts getting dark about three o'clock in the afternoon and stays dark until maybe 10 in the morning. So, yeah, during the winter time, we use a lot of electricity. Uh, it's not. It's not that bad. Um, yeah, it was. What it was, was um, I was sorting through a tray that had a lot of uh, cutlery and things in it, and there was a, a blade for a, a, what do you call them, a blender, 
quite a big one because I work in a hotel and uh, the blade was lying on its side and I didn't see it. And I put my hand into the tray and my wrist went down on the edge of the blade. And I mean, it only just touched it because as soon as I did it, I felt it and I lifted my, my hand up. And when I first, where am I? I'm all over the place. Can't get used to these. But when I first did it, I lifted my hand up and turned my wrist and I could just see a line. And then it's just that thing where you see it and there's no blood and then it suddenly just starts. But because I take blood thinners, um, it takes a long time to stop. So, uh, yeah, it, it, it was bleeding for, I don't know, a couple of hours. So, yeah, just have to be more careful. It is hard not to buy though when you keep seeing things and think, oh, that's nice. And then you end up with a, a pile of them. I remember seeing something where they were talking about, like we talk about a stash, like a stash of diamond paintings. And um, actually, I think it was a Diamond Art Club group. Um, they, they were saying that they'd prefer if people called it a collection rather than a stash because it sounds better. But I don't know. To me, a, a stash and a collection are two different things. To me, a collection is when they're completed. Then you have a collection of diamond paintings that are complete. If they're in boxes and they're in, the drills are all in bags, it's not really something that you're going to hang up and let people look at. To me, that's a stash. That, that would be the difference. You have so many in your stash and you have so many in your collection. To me, that makes sense. Trying to call a box full of little bits of plastic a collection. I mean, people collect things. They collect complete things. Like if you collect guitars, you don't collect guitar parts and put them in boxes and say that you've got a collection of guitars. That's just my, my spin on it. <clears throat> yeah. You could have warned me earlier, Helen. Does anybody else here use tweezers? Just a, a random question. I wonder what percentage of diamond painters use tweezers. What do you think? Yay, I converted somebody. So what do you think of the, the tweezers, Pom? Like, uh, now that you've got used to them, do you, do you prefer them, like, more like a lot more or and why like why did you decide to to use tweezers apart from watching me do it i mean what was it what was it you didn't like about the pens or did you just decide i'm going to give that a go
still struggle with filling in, really. You think it makes you tidier, yeah. So what about not having to refill pink wax and not having pink wax in between drills that you've got to try and pick out and that type of thing? Do you not think that's a nice advantage as well? I like the fact, I mean, there's a lot of things, but I like the fact that um, it's easy to manipulate drills. Like, you'll see me when I'm doing this. I mean, I do it without thinking. Every now and again, you'll see me maybe going back and just giving a little stab one direction or another. It's really easy to micromanage a drill with tweezers. Whereas a pen, the, the pen tip covers the whole drill, and it's, it's more awkward to try and turn the drill just a little bit to get it straight. And I think when you're doing squares, the tip of your tweezer is going down on the line. So it, to me, it's easier to line up. Yeah, I, I thought about that first as well. Like I thought, I'm oh, using tweezers all the time because you're doing the same thing, but I don't have a problem with it. I don't know if I, I change my grip at any time. Again, I don't think about it. Um, because the pens, I know that I do change the grip, um, move my hand sort of down a bit, back up a bit, that type of thing. Um, tweezers, I don't think so. I have noticed that I've changed the way that I hold the tweezers. Um, I now sit the tweezers, I need to think how I do this, but I sit the tweezers on that finger at the bottom, like this, this finger. It, it, that leg is sitting on that finger and then I've got my thumb up here and this other finger opposite it. So this this finger is actually sort of supporting the tweezers, holding them up. Yeah, I mean, I think it's one of these things, it's like, how do you hold a pen or a pencil? Everybody holds them different. It's just whatever you find comfortable. But at the beginning, when I was trying to use tweezers, I was trying to hold them away down here. And I think that was a, a big part of the problem because you, you press hard trying to pick up drills. I have to go and I know by now the Christmas designs will be for sale. It never ends. Yeah, it, it, honestly, it just never ends. Um, there's always something coming up. And as I said, there's, there's always really cool new designs um, that you just think, I've got to get that, it looks so good. And I mean, I, I've done it plenty of times. But I finally decided I've got quite a few that I really want to finish. <laughs> I want to start, never mind finish. Um, quite a few. As I said, I think I've got, I mean, it wasn't until I actually looked and, and checked the Gems Flow app. Um, I thought I had maybe two Diamond Art Club to do, uh, and I've, I've got six. So, and the, I mean, you know uh, Diamond Art Club aren't small. So even the, just them alone um, is going to take time. And the fact that I sit and use tweezers, or if I use a pen, if it's rounds, I use a pen, um, a single place. So... Any big canvas is going to take me a long time because I don't uh, I don't place quickly. I normally listen to music while I'm doing this, but because of copyright, I can't do that. Um, so normally I'm sitting here with a set of wireless headphones on, listening to hours of music. And that's the whole thing. Um, it's a relaxation. I like listening to music. And I can do this and listen to music at the same time. So who says guys can't multitask? I can't listen to podcasts or audiobooks and diamond paint at the same time. I tried it and I just can't do it. But I can listen to music, so I enjoy that. And then eventually, at the end of the day, I've got a picture. So for me, it isn't just the picture. The picture, it's nice to have it, but I think actually the process of diamond painting and building the picture up, 
actually means more to me than the picture. Don't know if that makes sense. <clears throat> oh, talking about pictures. I'm drinking uh, Pepsi Max with lime. Does anybody like Pepsi Max? Yeah, talking about pictures just reminded me of something. Um, I, I don't know. Again, I don't know who's seen the videos, but I did, um, I did an unboxing of a diamond painting um, that came pre-framed. The, the canvas was already stretched and uh, stapled to the wooden frame. <clears throat> and uh, I'm going to find it. This one, get the light out. Try to get the light away. It's called Autumn Forest Path. And uh, I did this again, it was a, a curiosity. It was it was a, a Danish company that I saw it advertised. So I bought it and it's the only diamond painting that I've done without a light pad because the frame already had a board behind the canvas and I think probably that was so that when you press down the canvas isn't sinking as you try and press into it if it didn't have a backing so it had like a, a cardboard not cardboard hardboard uh, backing so I did this and um, when I'm at work and I'm sitting in the, the canteen there's a pillar when you walk in the door there's this pillar and for I don't know how long I've walked in and thought that would be an ideal place for a diamond painting so eventually I spoke to the management and I said to them look I do this diamond painting thing they've never heard it but this diamond painting thing is a hobby and um, <clears throat> I was wondering if it would be okay if I hung a picture up there and they said yeah I said, uh, like something bright and colourful, and they said, yeah, that's that's a really good idea. So I took that diamond painting in because it was already in a frame and it doesn't have glass because I don't like the glass in Perspex because um, you get the reflections and it drives me nuts. So I no longer have them with glass or Perspex. Um, so I took this in and I went to see the maintenance guys and said, okay, um, I've asked and they've said it's okay. Um, could you hang this picture up here on this pillar? And they said, yep, okay, leave it with us. So that was that. And then I think the next day the picture was up on the pillar. I thought, cool. A lot of people were seeing it. A lot of people were asking about it. That was good. A few days later, um, I went in in the morning and the, uh, the frame, the canvas was sitting on the table leaning against the pillar. So I went over and picked it up and I saw that the way they had mounted it, they just used, it was like a double-sided sponge, like cushiony stuff, like sticky tape, double tape, double-sided. And they'd basically just stuck it in the wall and it had, after a few days, it had fallen off. The picture was fine, it was, the drills were all on it, no, no damage, it was okay. So I picked it up and I was walking back down to the, uh, their room and I met one of the guys and he saw me carrying and he said, that's okay. He said, we, we know about it. He said, we'll, we'll come up and we'll, we'll fit a screw and we'll hang it properly. We thought the tape would be enough, but obviously it wasn't. So he said, if you can just put it back. So I said, okay, went back into the canteen, put it back against the pillar and that was that. So a few days later, the picture had disappeared and I was like thinking, oh, there must be putting fittings on it or something, I don't know. But um, I think maybe three days later, I still hadn't seen it. So I happened to see one of the maintenance guys, like we've got like five. So I said to him, uh, I said, what's happening with the picture? And he said, oh, um, he said, yeah, somebody must have picked it up to like get it ready. So he radioed the rest of the team and said, does anybody know what's happened to Jim's picture? And everybody said no. And I thought, oh, 
seriously. Somebody's taking it. So, um, in the canteen at the entrance, there is a camera, like one of those dome things. And I thought the 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 pillar is directly in front of this camera. So I thought, okay, somebody's taking it. Maybe they thought it was getting thrown out or whatever because it wasn't hung up. Um, so I wrote a thing and I put it up in the wall in the canteen and uh, just put on it to to the person who took the picture. Um, and I said to them, unfortunately, it wasn't a freebie. Um, it was actually a picture um, that, that I made. And every little piece of it was placed one at a time with tweezers. It took me a month. Um, and the idea was I wanted it hung up to brighten up the canteen. And uh, the guys fitted it, but they hadn't fitted it well enough and it had fallen down. That's why it was lying against the pillar. Um, if the person who took it could please return it so the guys can hang it properly, that would be very much appreciated. Thanks in advance. Um, and then I wrote underneath that, it would also save security from having to check the video camera above the entrance to the canteen. So that was up for a few days. Nothing happened. Then the manager, there's actually two hotels owned by the same company uh, right next to each other at Copenhagen Airport. Uh, the manager, uh, I, I see him every day, and he came past and he said, still no sign of the picture. And I said, no. And he said, okay. Um, he said, what if I buy one from you? Like, you do one, I'll pay you for it, and the hotel will keep it. Because the initial idea was that I would put a new diamond painting up at the beginning of every month like, and just keep changing the picture just to give people something different to look at. So he said, well, what if I just buy one? And I said, well, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll sort of think about it. <clears throat> and two or three days later, somebody said to me, they, they, they actually put an email out to everybody in, in both hotels and saying, like, if anybody's seen it or um, if somebody took it thinking it, it was getting thrown out, can you please return it? Um, so a few days later, um, so an email came from housekeeping in the hotel and they said, we've, we've got your picture. So I went down and uh, sure enough, it was there. So I think somebody maybe thought it was getting thrown out. And I think the fact that I said about the security camera that they may not have thought about maybe made the difference and they brought it back and just left it at housekeeping. They found it in a black bag. It wasn't in a black bag. So um, somebody's had it in a black bag. I think somebody's went into housekeeping uh, early, maybe in the morning when there's no staff in there and they've just left it, which is fine. I mean, it's fine. It wasn't, I was more concerned about just getting the thing back. So uh, that's the story of that picture. So now I'm on vacation. I gave the guys the picture back again. Hopefully when I go back in a week, um, it's going to be hanging up where it should be. So we'll see. But the punchline of that is the video camera in the canteen does not work. But the person that read it doesn't know that. I only found out when I said to them about it and they checked with security and security said, oh, the, the camera in the canteen doesn't work. So... The person could have taken it. I'm hoping that they returned it because just purely because of a, a, guilt, a guilty conscience more than anything else. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's a really, really good place to work, um, the hotel. Everybody's very friendly, very helpful. And I had a lot of people coming up asking me, have they found your picture yet? Have they found your picture yet? So... Um, and then after we got it back, they were coming up and saying, oh, I'm glad they found the picture. So I'm hoping that maybe some people might get interested in diamond painting um, once they've seen a few. I mean, that one's okay, but I definitely wouldn't class it as one of the, the best ones that I've got. So, um, yeah, I've got uh, the Little Tin Soldier from Diamond Art Club. I think that's discontinued now. Um, I'm thinking about maybe taking that one in 
um, for December because the picture is actually the little tin soldier and the princess underneath the uh, mistletoe. So that ties in with Christmas. So, And it's a bit more impressive than that one. So I'm thinking maybe I'll take that one in. But I need to actually measure the width of the pillar to make sure uh, to make sure it'll fit. I'm not sure how wide the pillar is. It's neat to see the picture come to life. As you, yeah, if I didn't talk as much, it would be coming to life a lot faster. Um, that's usually how these things go. Once I start talking about stuff, I, I tend to concentrate more on talking than anything, as you've noticed. But uh, in case anybody's dropped in that hasn't seen it, I'll switch camera just to let you see uh, what I've done so far. So that's that's what I've done so far. Um, you can see the the gaps, the little white lines. If I switch the light pad, I'm going the wrong way, switch the light pad off, and then I switch the light to white light instead of that sort of orangey colour. You get an idea. If I move the light a little bit, uh, it messes up the camera. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. But it is, you can see some sparkle here. Um, there's ABs in this as well. Uh, only two, but there's some uh, red ones and the monks, uh, whatever monks wear. I don't, I don't even know what it's called. Um, and there's some green ones uh, and some of the leaves. I shouldn't have done that. The camera is really, doesn't fix it. The camera is really sensitive to light. It's totally messed up this area. <clears throat> but you can, you can see it better, I think. Yeah, if I move the light up and down a bit. I mean, the whole thing is like that. It's just because that happens to be where the light's for me, it's shiny here, where I'm sitting, I can see it all shining there. But from where the camera is, it's shining here. But the whole thing is uh, very sparkly. As I said earlier, it's, it's resin drills, so nice drills. Um, if I go back to the yellow light, it might help. Maybe not. Yeah, it's, I don't know why that is totally whitened out there. But if I switch the light pad on and put it to its absolute brightest, you can just see gaps everywhere. But <clears throat> to be fair, uh, Diamond Dark Club ones look like this as well. If you uh, put the, the light on bright underneath, there's gaps everywhere. But that isn't the point. The point is when the light's off and when you're standing back at normal viewing distance, it looks perfect. I mean, this even, <coughs> I'm really close. Um, it's really hard to see the gaps from this distance. So once it's up in the wall, I have no doubt it's going to look really, really nice. So this might go into the canteen for a bit, just to let them see some really good ones. And that's no light. Again, I mean, this, as I said, this is about a foot away. Um, if you look at this area, it looks absolutely fine. If I switch the light pad on and turn it right up, I don't know why that flickered, you can see those gaps. Switch it off, they disappear. I should be cutting down, but my body aches too much. Uh, I hate cutting down, um, even when my, when my body isn't aching. I hate cutting up. I hate cutting down. And I mean, I, I read some people, I don't know why it is. And I'm adjusting the light in the light pad. The picture goes a bit weird. <clears throat> Um, yeah, I mean, I've seen people comment and saying that they, they love getting up. I 
have never loved kitting up ever. But compared to kitting up for a counted cross stitch, I would rather cut up a diamond painting. I suppose it's all relative. Hi Nikki, just checking to see if you're actually going to listen through this one. Nikki's in Australia and uh, I think she caught me live once, but she always comments because she listens to them um, while she's diamond painting, I think, maybe while she's doing the housework, I don't know. Um, but she listens through. So I just randomly now and again, I'll just say, hi, Nikki. Sometimes I don't. And then I see if I get a reply to see if she's been listening. She actually commented, I did a, a shot. Um, I don't know if people have seen it. Um, where I've got a mug and it says, uh, Real men use tweezers. I did a little video with that mug in it. And she commented about the fact that a single place, um, because she uses multi placers, she said that if she single placed, she would never get her stash finished. But for me, it isn't a race at all. I don't think about how long it took me. I just sit in diamond paint. I enjoy doing it. That's the main thing for me. And it doesn't matter how, like, which company it came from. Like, it could be one of the little cheapies. I still sit and listen to music and I'm quite happy just placing drills. And if I get a lot of uh, tabs on them, I don't think about it. As long as I've got enough to finish it, um, I don't mind. And even then, I, now I've probably got spares of most colours. That if a few are missing, um, it's it's not even worth getting in touch with a company to wait two weeks. So, uh, yeah. <clears throat> now I'm just checking that I'm doing the right colour. I've done that before where I'm I'm sort of thinking about the next colour I'm going to be doing and then that gets into my head and I end up putting the wrong colour and the wrong thing. Yeah, I mean, again, it's a hobby. It's, it's, it's meant to be a hobby, something you enjoy, relaxation. If you're doing a hobby that stresses you, um. I, I would think it might be an idea to get a different hobby. But I think the only pressure in diamond painting is the pressure that you put on yourself. Like maybe you're trying to hurry to get it done um, because you've got another 50 to do or you want to get this one finished because you want to do this one next and that sort of thing. Some people seem to do that. Um the other one is if you are doing a diamond painting for a particular event, like somebody's getting married or something like that, or a birthday, and you're thinking, okay, I've got so long to get this done. Like, yeah, I'm fine. I've got six months before it's their birthday or it's Christmas or whatever it is. And then suddenly it's like you've got four weeks. Because that can happen as well. Like life gets in the way. Sometimes you just don't have as much time. Um, I mean, recently I've been finding it hard to find time to really get anything done. And that's why the videos have stopped. I mean, I have had people contacting me asking, <laughs> asking if I'm okay. Um, and then suddenly I did a little burst of uh, shots and people were like, like, when are you coming back and doing the full length videos? Um, it's just, it's trying to fit things in. Uh, and... I've also got to spend time just relaxing away from this. Um, and, it, yeah, I mean, if I, if I need time, I just take it. It's, I, don't, uh, I don't try and put myself under any pressure. And then I get the companies that send me stuff and they want me to do a review. 
um, because recently I've just sort of put, put brakes on it a bit. Um, I've been getting emails saying, when are you going to review the product percent? And it's like, well, it'll be soon. Um, I'm not going to start getting stressed that I have to do things by certain times. and um, I just don't want to get into that sort of situation. But I mean, the main the main thing is I've just been too busy and I haven't had time. And sometimes I like to just sit and diamond paint rather than sit and record videos. So it's been a bit quiet recently, but that's going to change. Hopefully, starting tomorrow. I mean, the, the problem that I've got, like, doing these lives is the fact that I know that I'm, I'm on, as far as America's concerned, I'm on live early in the morning or in the middle of the day when most people are at work. And I'm never live when most people are home, like maybe, I don't know, 7 o'clock in the evening, because what time is that for me? Eastern time, I think that's uh, seven o'clock in the morning. Uh, seven o'clock in the evening be one in the morning, that type of thing. <clears throat> and there's no way that I'm going to be sitting uh, doing this at one o'clock in the morning, keeping everybody awake while talking. <laughs> Maybe I'll skip down and just toss the drills, yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I keep the drills. Um, I have had times where I've just thought I can't be bothered like sorting them back into the, the bags and that type of thing. But what I do is I've got a shadow box and I put the drills in that. So it's like a, like a sand picture, I suppose, made up of drills normally it's the the reject drills like the ones that i'm putting in the yellow tray like these these will end up in the shadow in fact i'll go and get it i mean i don't know if everybody knows what a shadow box is i didn't um until i saw something somewhere that somebody had done this and i thought what is that um, i found out it was called a shadow box No, I don't know if this is going to focus because I always end up doing this, things that I'm not expecting to do. But this is like a frame and there's a slot in the top, you can see, just. And what I do is uh, when, when I'm finished, well, it's the wrong kind of tray, but basically I'm going to get the slot back, pour the drills in. So... And then they just sort of pile up. So these are all uh, mainly reject drills, but these ones in the top, you can see it's sort of layered with the same sort of colours. This was, I uh, can't remember what one it was, but the last one I did, there were no DMC codes. So I didn't know exactly which DMC code things were. So what I did was I just poured them in here. Um, and the reason that, that I don't throw them is I'm conscious about all this plastic thing, like um, like waste plastic and ending up in the sea and fish eat it and all that type of thing. Um, and I think like these tiny little drills, nobody's going to sort them anywhere. They're, they're just going to be end up somewhere. So rather than ending up somewhere, I put them in here. 
I don't know what I'm going to do when I fill it. Um, I'm half, halfway, nearly, and about, I don't know, I don't know how long I've had this, a year and a half, two years. The other thing is you can just shake it, and it looks different every time. I mean, I've got some special drills, and you see the back of them, and some special drills in here as well. I'll give it a shake, change it. So now those layers have gone. There's a little gold star down there by my thumb. So, yeah, that's what I do with the, the drills. I, I don't like throwing them away. I just feel they're just going to lay somewhere for forever. I mean, some people put them in jars. They have like fancy jars or fancy bottles, that type of thing, and they they pour them in them. Again, it's just adds colour to it. They use it as a, an ornament. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, Tom, was it you that was saying about uh, back? Out of focus. Yeah. That looks out of focus to me. Back in a sec. I have to switch screens when I do this stuff. That's a bit better. Yeah, that's that's too organised for me. I, I just put them in and shake it and mix them up. Um, yeah, was it was it you that was talking about uh, filling the gaps using tweezers? You said you were having a problem filling them. All I do is drop the drill in. Or near enough drop it. I'm just thinking about what I do because I, I don't think about it. Yeah, I basically drop it. Um, so I'll find one that's surrounded. Yeah, I just drop that. It's sitting at an angle. It's not right. And all I do is just press it down slightly. Just touch it. And because everything else is sort of set, um, you put pressure on the drill, it will just slide into the, the square. That's all I do. When I place the first ones, um, what I'm looking at is the bottom left-hand corner, and all I do is get the, the bottom left-hand corner of the drill and the bottom left-hand corner of the square. When I come back to fill in, like I'll do these quickly, well, not that quickly, but example um so right, i've got those four in so i've got this square um all i do is just drop it and it's just touch it and that's it I, I don't think about lining anything up because i've already pl placed these four so the one in the middle just goes where it goes do people work on more than one painting at a time. No, I, I never made the shadow box, Helen. I bought it on Amazon. I just went to Amazon, searched shadow box, found this one that had the slot on the top and thought, that's perfect because I don't need to open it up. I don't need to open the back. So there's no chance of me accidentally spilling thousands of drills. Um, I use the, the trays that have got the little funnel. You know the white ones? The little funnel. And I use that. I have, I think maybe twice, been working on a diamond painting, paused it, and worked on another one, like a small one. Can't remember the reasons, but I've only done it maybe twice in three years. I, I like to finish them. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I know I have done it. But there was a reason. I don't know why I was I was maybe just wanting to get them done for something. 
No, I think it was because I had ideas for YouTube videos. So I wanted to sit and start working on these small ones to record. So I ended up, I had, like I've said it like in the videos, when, when I'm doing a, a YouTube video and you see this stuff, um, there's always a diamond painting underneath it. Because we're in the lucky position that we've got basically a spare room that we use as a diamond painting studio. That's what we call it now, we call it the studio. Um, and we've got two uh, drafting tables facing each other. So these tables are here all the time and that is all they're here for, diamond painting. So we have our diamond paintings on the tables all the time. And then when we're not working on them, um, they're covered with these uh, table placemats just to keep everything nice and neat and tidy and clean. Stops any dust and hairs or whatever. Um, just an extra layer of protection. Because once you've finished your uh, sections, I always cover them up. Normally, I don't have... I'll switch camera again. Get out of the way. Um, normally, when I'm working on this, I would have these... This section here would be totally covered with these placemats. And the only area that would be visible would be the section that I'm working on. And then um, when I, I stop, if there's still areas of glue, I put the release paper back and then I'll put a mat over the top. So then I just lift the mat and then I lift the release paper and then I just carry on. But when it's finished like this, this would always be covered. I only uncovered it so that people can see what I'm working on and get a better idea of what it is. So normally if you come in here and we're not diamond painting, you'll just see these over two tables just covered. So that's that's the way that we do it. But I mean, I know that not everybody has the space um, to have tables sitting with diamond paintings on them all the time. I mean, some people are using the dining room table, which I did for, I can't remember how long, a year maybe. Um, <clears throat> So I had to take everything off the table when we were going to have dinner and all that sort of stuff. I have a craft room, but I work on my bed with an easel and a light pad. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I couldn't do that. Um, I have problems with my back. I'm going to move. You just keep seeing my hat all the time. Um, yeah, I have problems with my back. So I couldn't sit in bed and diamond paint. Um, like in the morning when I wake up, I have to go up straight away because I've got back pain. Um, so even just now when I'm, I'm on vacation, um, I'm normally getting up about five o'clock in the morning um, because I have to get out of bed. So I'll get up, make a cup of tea, and then come in here and sit while everybody else is sleeping and sit in diamond paint. So... Uh, yeah, I admire the people that can diamond paint and use uh, like a little lap board and, and do a big diamond painting with just that tiny amount of workspace. Um, I, I don't think I, I would be able to keep diamond painting do, doing that. It's, to me, it's just too uncomfortable. And where do you keep the drills? You have the drills at the side. Um, I mean, I've got everything on the table. As you've seen, um, I've got my trays, I've got all my, my drills, my laptop even. But normally that's not, only put have the laptop there when I'm doing this stuff. But um, I have everything on the table in front of me. I'm sitting in a, it's like an office chair type thing. It's height adjustable. It can swing back a bit and forward. and um, It's really comfortable. So I can move in the chair um, rather than being sitting on a like a wooden chair that you've got no movement. Because when I was diamond painting and working on the dining room table, I was starting to get bad like neck pain, shoulder pain, back pain because I was leaning over the table, especially in bigger diamond paintings where you're having to stretch further. And uh, that's why I ended up. Uh, trying the, the drafting tables because I saw that people were using them and I thought, right, I'll try it. And 
that made a huge difference because the table is slightly tilted up. It's not, well, you can see it's not that high, but if I sit anything like a, a pen, it'll roll off the table. Um, <clears throat> and I can I can lower the chair or raise the chair. So I can have myself sort of lowered down so I'm sort of reaching straight forward rather than being sort of hunched over, reaching down like you would be with a normal set table and set chair. So I think these things are important as well. Um, the physical setup of your, your work area, getting yourself as comfortable as possible, especially if you sit for a length of time. And I mean, I can sit here for hours, like if I've got the time, um, maybe weekends, um, because again, I get up really early. So I've got two or three hours before people get up and I'll sit in diamond paint for those two or three hours. Um, and I, I don't have any problems. Whereas before it was starting to get sort of sooner and sooner that I was starting to feel on my back, my neck, whatever. And I think if I hadn't swapped to this, I, I wouldn't be diamond painting. I couldn't, I couldn't diamond paint for that length of time. Or maybe I would just be doing very small ones. I don't know. Beds are big, just big tables. Ah, okay, arthritis, yeah, that doesn't sound nice. I mean, I've fell and hit my tailbone before, um, but luckily I suppose it didn't have any other consequences, but that hurts really bad. I wonder, I wondered if the production of the kits, especially drills, would use chemicals. That would, yeah, I've thought about that as well, Carly. It, it's really hard to get any information. I tried sort of chasing that up, um, contacting different companies, and never really got anywhere. The only company that that I got a lot of feedback from was uh, Diamond. I had to think about that. Uh, Diamond Dots. Um, they told me they, they use uh, virgin materials um, to produce the drills. And um, because I was saying about recycling, like recycled plastic, make drills, that sounds good. And they said the problem with that is you don't know what chemicals are in the plastics that you're using. using. So they use virgin material so they know exactly the chemical compound um, which suddenly makes sense. Just never thought about it. But uh, I don't think any other company really gave me any answer about the chemicals and stuff. I'm still thinking that's out of focus. <clears throat> I mean, the other thing is the drills are made in China and how how strict the Chinese health and safety regulations are, I have no idea. And you, I mean, you get all these companies that you buy diamond paintings from, but the actual manufacturer of the drills is probably only a few, I would think. You'll find that different companies are getting drills from the same source. But I don't know about what any like rules and regulations as far as uh, the chemicals and things. I mean, Tammy, the company that Tammy works for, they they produce uh, headsets and they have to have documented everything about everything that's in those headsets, the type of plastics that's used. Um, they've got regulations. They, they have things that they cannot contain. They have percentages of things they can contain, up to an X percent of whatever in the plastic or in the, the wires or whatever. It's very, very detailed, and they've got to meet those reg regulations. But 
I don't know if all companies are as sort of diligent as, as that. As far as I know, Diamond Art Club are manufacturing their own drills, but they're still being manufactured in China. They are, they are, they definitely are making their own drills, but I'm pretty sure they're they're made in China and then they're shipped um, to the states. So then they say that they're shipped from America, but they're made in China. But that is a bit different because that is Diamond Art Club's own drills. Um, so you would hope that, that they are a bit more stringent than some companies might be. But again, that's purely speculation. I don't, I don't know anything about the, the rules and regulations about plastics and what plastics you can use and what you can't use or what you should, shouldn't be using, what chemicals you shouldn't be using or should use. I don't know anything about any of it. But I'm sure there will definitely be guidelines and there will be regulations because at Tammy's work, they have got very stringent uh, regulations because if you use a plastic that starts to irritate skin, people are putting these little earbuds in. Um, they could, it could cause ear infections. It could cause problems with their hearing, that sort of thing. And then when it comes to the wiring and stuff, if they don't use stuff that meet that meets certain uh, regulations, they can catch fire, and that has happened um, with companies in China imitating the original product and selling them as the original. And then uh, what happened at least one time was. Tammy's company got a complaint from a customer that the earpiece had started to melt and they uh, sent it in and the engineers took it apart. When they looked at it from the outside, it looked like it was theirs, but when they opened it up, they could see the components were cheap components and it, it, wasn't, um, it wasn't their product. It wasn't an original, it was a copy. So they're doing that with earpieces that go in people's ears what the regulation is going to be with uh, pieces of plastic hi Chantel quietly sneaking in as usual how are you? haven't spoke for a long time Yeah, I'm doing fine. Okay. Thanks for asking. I've taken a week off to try and concentrate on getting some YouTube videos done. Concerts were good. Um, we've got Sting. Uh, on Friday, that's the next concert. We were out at Mojo Blues Bar last night, seeing a guy called Ray Weaver. Uh, I used to work beside him for uh, four years. So when I saw he was playing Mojo, uh, we went last night. That's pretty cool. A bit different from Deep Purple. Though. I am doing Praying Monk. Mm. Let me have a look at what I've done so far. It's 
been too long. I'm forgetting what I'm clicking on. Um, yeah, I'll let you see what I've done so far without the hat. Switch the light pad off. Put the white light on. So this is called Praying Monk for obvious reasons. So I'm not, not even halfway yet. Um, once I finish this row, I'm still under halfway. Um, I can let you see the damage on gems floor. That's what it's eventually going to look like. So you can see by the time I get to the top of the monk's head, I'm probably about halfway. <clears throat> yeah, I think it looks really cool. It looks like stained glass. Um, it's got ABs in it as well. Yeah, that was the thing that drew me to it. The, just the, the combination of colours just looks really nice. So how have you been, Chantel? Anything new? Working on electric. Doesn't ring any bells. I'm going to Google it. All right, it's electric. No, oh, that's bright. So this is what Sean tells working on. Plenty of colour in that. Yeah, I'm looking forward to doing Magic Boss. I'll just find that. That's uh, the last Diamond Dark Club that I bought. Plenty of colour in that as well. A ton of ABs, so you'll be using your tweezers.
Oh, that's a point. I can't remember what Magic Boss is. Magic Boss Square. So it's square as well. Okay, I've just noticed the time. How long have I been on? Two hours. <laughs> yeah, I think. I know I haven't been on for a long time, but uh, I think two hours is plenty. So, hopefully tomorrow I get a bit of peace and quiet and uh, I can record some videos. That was the plan. I took this week off to try and get some videos done because really been struggling to find time to do it just been doing some shots as Chantel knows and uh, struggling to find time to actually record proper videos so I was planning to do it this week and they decided to uh, resurface well dig up not not dig up just scrape away the surface of the road outside and put down a new surface so they decided to do that this week the week that I took off to record so uh, today was far too noisy to do a, a recording so I'm hoping tomorrow it's not going to be as bad and I can get some videos done I've got 18 videos to do uh, of things that I need to Unbox, unbag, compare, and then I've got ideas for other videos as well. So probably got about twenty-two videos to do. Um, I'm not planning to get twenty-two videos done this week, but hopefully I'll get a few. So should start to see some new videos coming up, some new stuff, some stuff that I've never seen before. So. And I don't mean diamond paintings, uh, diamond painting accessories. So hopefully uh, some interesting stuff that people haven't seen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I like I said, I, I started emailing companies and asking questions um, a long time ago. I can't remember before Corona. Um, the only company that really gave me anything decent uh, was Diamond Dots. They were mega, mega helpful and went over everything. Um, they, they even offered to send me the paperwork and all that stuff. Um, it's a bit too much, but I mean, it was nice to see a company actually coming forward. Um, you find that certain questions you ask companies, they some sometimes you ask questions and you get answers really fast, and then other questions you just don't really get an answer. Hi, Tinker Tink Tink. Uh, unfortunately, I am just heading off. Uh, Five forty p.m. Time for dinner. I've been on for two hours and ten minutes. So, uh, yeah. First time I've been on for a while. So thanks to everybody that dropped in. Really appreciate it. It's nice to get a bit of a conversation going. And normally when I'm doing this, I'm just sitting listening to music. So it's good to catch up. I'm glad everybody's okay. You can also watch the replay if you're really bored for two hours and ten minutes. I'm sure Nicky's going to watch it. So thanks for dropping in and hope everybody has a good week. Hopefully some new videos will be coming up very soon. And that's it. So thanks for watching. And in the meantime, take care, be safe and wash your hands.